I'm going to show you all how to fill out your routine forms. The first thing that you want to think about when you're looking through these moves is uh, what moves you're good at. Now, don't necessarily look at this as uh, moves that you have to learn. Certainly think of that for, uh, for next year. Um, I think for right now it's best if you just focus on what you're capable of and then putting it together in a routine with connections. So I'm pretty good at overhead throws, five ball overhead throws. I can pretty much connect anything uh, that I can do two overhead throws. So I'd first uh, I'd go to the move database and I'd uh, look for, uh, actually I'd look in the connections first. right? And in these connections here, uh, you see there's move two, move one, well move one, move two. So move one, that's the entry move. That's the first move of the connection. Move two is the exit move. That's the second move of the connection. So if I want to connect something to overhead throws, I would uh, I would look in move two, overhead throws. Uh, there. Overhead throws right there, that's move two. Now I just go along here, and the blind catch, you see blind catch there connected to overhead throws as a connection value of 0.52. Now that's just the connection value. Um, that's not the actual uh, point value that you're going to get for the connection. The point value will be determined by a multiplying factor of 0.52 when you multiply the connection value of move 1 and move 2. If I connected the blind catch to an overhead side swap, that would be a connection value of 0.54. Connected to shoulder throws, 0.56. Back cross is 0.62. Not doing shoulder throws or back crosses. Uh, I can't rely on them well enough to do them in a connection. Looks like I'm going to want to try a blind catch. So I'm going to do a blind catch and connect that to overhead throws. Get a connection of 0.52. Uh, so let's just uh, let's see what that looks like now. I've put together a list of uh, all the moves that I think I can do, and uh, these numbers right here. Uh, these correspond uh, to the move so that uh, you know when you're in the routine form all you do is for a 3 up 720 you type in 19 as here I'll show you uh, go to the routine move number you see it says move number right there you just type in boom 19 and it fills it out for you uh, post qualify it tells you when a post qualify is required that means uh, continuing in a pattern that lasts uh, 10 or more catches that's a qualify. There's the move value auto filled right there. So if we look uh, for, let's see. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do a blind catch. So this is the move database, and you see blind catch is right here, and num it's number 11. So we'll go back here. We'll fill this out as 11. Now it's the blind catch. Post qualify is also required for the blind catch. Then we're gonna go to overhead throws, which is number nine. Overhead throws nine. This is so much fun. I really like this routine form. Thank you, Marty. Uh, so you type in nine, right? Now overhead throws. Uh, and also, let's see, I believe, yeah, so minimum catches, maximum catches. So for overhead throws, you could do 10 throws. That's the minimum that would be allowed to, to accrue points, or 20 throws. Uh, and here's the different point values. So for the minimum, you get 0.28 points. And for another 10 throws, you get 0.31 points. So I'm going to do the maximum. So I'll go over here and where it says planned catches for the overhead throws. I'll type in 20. And you see how the move value, the default, even if you don't enter anything, the default is the minimum. So even if, even if I enter 10 here, still 0.28. But go to 20, 31. You cannot do more. <laughs> it's not You're not going to get more points for that. So just keep it at 20 and you're done there. Um, okay, so then you go to the connection. Is it connected? This is the uh, the field that you fill that out. So if it's connected, yes. And you see your connection value pops up here. So with a, a multiplying factor of 0.52, these two move values connected to, together give you an extra 0.21 points. So what I've done is I've just I've looked through all of the moves. These are all the moves and then I looked at all the connection values to determine which ones uh, score well in in which order. I mean, if you'll notice in the connection form, you don't get the same point value all the time uh, with the uh, with the same two moves if you swap them between move one and move two. Uh, sometimes it's more difficult to go from one move to the other than vice versa and vice versa. So we'll uh, just look for an example here. Like uh, if I did 
the blind catch as move two from overhead throws, it's only uh, 0.45 points as the multiplying factor for the connection. Uh, however, if I do the blind catch first, and then I go to overhead throws, then it's 0.52 points. Uh, so you see how you really have to be careful of what order you connect things in to maximize your score. Uh, a little bit of homework uh, that you have to do on this. And so after doing my homework, uh, here's what I've come up with. Oh yeah, also you can, you can do any move twice as long as it's done in a connection. So I'm going to do the blind catch, uh, overhead 5-up 360, and 3-up uh, 720. I'm going to do each of those twice uh, in connection with something. Uh, you don't necessarily want to connect them to themselves because that might not score the highest in the connection bonus. Uh, so you really want to think about the best way to maximize your score by... Uh, by figuring out what to connect it to. So after doing my homework, let's see, here's the order that I think would work best. Uh, since I've already done the work here, all I need to do is look at the numbers. Oops. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 18, 12, 29, 19, 37, oops, 19, 37, 29, 37. So all the moves are filled out. Fill in the planned catches. I'm definitely going to do 20 just to get a little extra points there. For the, uh, the overhead sight swap, 744, minimum catch is 12. 12 is all we care about. So you might as well, you can enter 12 or not, the score is going to stay the same. Uh, so you can just look here, anytime there's a number here, that's when you know you have a decision to make. And uh, are you going to fill that out or, 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 or leave it as the default minimum? Uh, overhead side swap 645, I will try for 24. So give me the extra points there. Yeah, now I'm up to 0.38. Awesome. I'm going to win. So you notice, even though uh, you don't have to enter the minimum, I like to be thorough. Stop. Hey. Ooh. All right. <laughs> Boy, had I known you could... Can you really just... Yeah. I hate it when these things block me from seeing what I'm trying to do. All right. Uh, yeah, I can't do anything. Thanks for making that float, Marty. Appreciate it. Now the connections. Uh, so, real simply, uh, I know all these are going to be connected here. Boom, boom. So, up to the high, middle, low shower pattern. So I'll just work my way up. So high, middle, low. Yes, it is. So I'll just work my way backward. All of these. And actually, I think you can copy and just select them all. Paste. There you go. That'll save you some time. Although the drop down is kind of fun. Kind of fun. I like it. All right. Stop. Stop doing that. I don't want you to be highlighted anymore. Okay. Uh, all right. So then I stop. Here it is. There's the question. Will this move be connected to the previous previous move? Yes. So now we stop. I stopped. I'm going to start over here with the three up 720. That will not be connected to the previous move because it's starting fresh. But then everything else will be. So yes, I'm going to connect that. Yes, I'm going to connect that. And yes, I'm going to connect that. Okay. So after all of this, my uh, my start value just from the moves alone is six point. What is that? 6.70. Uh, my total connection value is 1.43. Now that might not sound like a lot, just one. Po that's a whole, p almost a point and a half, just from connecting moves. It's essentially like, uh, okay, you can only do 15 moves. So the only way that you can get more points than you can get from the 15 moves is to connect them together. So that's like getting a few extra moves in there. Uh, so with all that added together. Uh, I've got a, uh, a complete start value with connections of 6.70. 6.70. But remember, uh, I'm working with old school moves here. Uh, my skill level has not really advanced to uh, what the overall competitors uh, are doing now. That is how you put together uh, your routine form. That's how you utilize the, uh, the connection sheet. Uh, how you figure out the best order to do your moves in and just go through this move database and look for uh, for the moves that you can do that score the highest and look at all the connections and 
fill it out. Uh, and then also do it for rings and for clubs. So yeah, got any questions about this, email me at info at the WJF.com. Really excited about this Intercontinental Championship idea. We already have um, around 20 competitors from, I think, 15 different countries uh, so far entered into this. Uh, there's still plenty of time to enter. And the fact that we're probably going to be giving away $10,000, we already have $7,000 right now. Uh, so I think between now and December, uh, I think a lot of people will step up and donate uh, so that we can get to that $10,000 first place prize. This is not distributed amongst first, second, and third place. This is just first place. So what I just demonstrated is, the, is, is a very valuable lesson, which is do not create a routine just based solely on the point values and then hope you'll be able to learn it. Uh, you know, test it out. Test out each one of these connections. See if you can do it. Uh, it should be something that you can you can do with very few drops uh, now. Uh, and you can change your routine form after phase one. You don't have to do the same routine for phase one, phase two, and then the WJF 10 overall championship. Uh, you can change it in between each phase. Uh, once you submit it for a phase, that's, that's your routine because you'll have already submitted a video with it. Uh, but then you've got another couple of months uh, for phase two. Uh, to do a completely different routine if you want to. So you can actually be working on two different routines at the same time, uh, keeping in mind if you do make it to round two, uh, that that's the routine that you'd be doing. So get a head start practicing that while uh, phase one, your routine for phase one, uh, is, is more within your current abilities. And then your estimated abilities for phase two um, might be a little bit more difficult. And then for phase three, uh, you'll have even more time to get that one down. But at least at that point, you'll have three possible routines that you can do for WJF 10. Uh, so you'd be very well prepared uh, if you win the Intercontinental Championship. I mean, placing in the top three. Remember, top three are all winners. Uh, they all win the exact same thing. And that's it. Take care. Bye-bye now.